Hello, lasers and gents. Burbrida come here again. Our nipples at the mic. Bring you some motor action this time against a fellow teammate, Max Grisevich. At the bottom half, you would see me piloting Absent Company or Melira Combo. At the top half of the screen, you would see Max playing. Timur Delver or Ta Tarmo Delver, the whatever way you want to call it. I haven't played against the Timur version of Delver that much, and uh, normally Max plays either Affinity or Grixis, uh, Grixis Twin, but now Twin is gone, and uh, I guess he's a bit tired out of playing Bring to Light Scape Shift so he took something just for funsies I've played against Grixis Delver with Absent Company a lot of the, a lot of times and this time it's gonna be a little bit of different dynamic he would have more pressure early on because of Tarmogoyfs and less discard which is good for me well pretty much no discard spells turn one inquisition from any version of Crixus has been really painful in the past I do like Delver decks and this build as well in the new meta game after the bannings but I think the Timur Provis builds popularized by Patrick Chapin I think this deck uh, is better than classical Timur Delver simply because uh, it has more power to it uh, it can win out of nowhere where else, uh, whereas uh, Timur Delver cannot and uh, it gained a new card from the new set the Storm Chaser Mage the flying Monastery Swift Spear in combination with cards like Mutageni Grove Become a Mans and Timur Battle Rage, all of the cards that I believe the Timur Pro is like plays, uh, it could uh, sometimes function as a pseudo infect deck. I'll be gone here just for a moment and then soon come back, just trying out different slides this is somewhat brighter so adjusting that but uh, the game has started so this is uh, why I'm not cutting this right now this fragment so that you see the entire game but I'll soon switch off the light a little bit uh, back to darker which will be fixed with the editing programs so you most likely won't notice much of a difference uh, I just hated the glare so uh, there was an island in Delver and his part and in my case it was untapped uh, temple garden from a uh, uh, windswept heath in, uh, into noble hierarch and then forest into spellskites and the bird of paradise uh, the absent deck plays four birds, three nobles and two walls so um, there's a lot of that mana acceleration also uh, two main deck spell skites so that helps the glares and my teammates part are really hard to uh, justify uh, and manipulate but we're, we'll be trying to do our best so his turn two he starts off with uh, serum visions I believe he put two top cards to the bottom then it's uh, another land uh, I think it's uh, oh yeah it's a breathing pool I believe so second over joins the party the first one didn't flip so that is a bummer definitely that was definitely a bummer but if they both flip next turn then it will be rather annoying then it will be rather annoying 
Uh, he was joking before my next turn that there will be some six shenanigans on my turn three. In fact, there will be. While he's tapped, I think I was just going for it. Uh, my third land, I believe, is a fetch land. No, it's a horizon canopy. Excuse me. Uh, taking one pain from the canopy. Uh, keeping a bird just in case uh, I wouldn't flip into anything juicy and then I will be f kind of forced to maybe chum block one of the delvers also that keeps uh, blue mana up for for spell scout if I really need to in order not to take too much damage that's kitchen things and viserser so we're both now at 18 life Uh, his delvers flip, but uh, it doesn't matter so much. He shows me a spell pierce from the delvers, which is okay. That's Skeldin Tarn on his side. I can't really call the calling here even for one because I have only two green creatures untapped. Now I break to fix the lights, but uh, it's time for me to uh, explain some stuff in the meantime. So while well, I'm fixing the light, I know about spell peers, so I should be careful about it next turn when I'm gonna. Uh, attempt Corda Calling. He's doing some Mambo Jumbo as well. But yeah, and during Skype calls, it's different, uh, difficult to eradicate any possibility of the glares. So I, I have Corda Calling for the third piece, and I can play around Spell Pierce. Uh, and even if he tries to build something in response, I still have spell skies, so he's kind of doomed here. And I don't really even need to go the full way. Uh, it doesn't matter if um, if I cannot go for the red cap because the infinite life is already enough for him. If he would be like the Tarma twin deck of the past, then infinite life is not a guaranteed win. Tapping the noble in a temple garden to cast an offense, so I didn't really need to cord for the third piece here. And I have spell skate in play. I can pay f uh, for spell pierce, though that wouldn't matter. So he has three mana. But what's gonna end up happening is that he's gonna attempt to remand my guy, but because of the bird and horizon canopy, I still had double white. So I was just recasting it, and he's gonna scoop. Uh, even with lightning bolts and uh, electrolyze, flooding the board with mana dorks is sometimes a necessary thing to do because in this kind of matchups against tempo decks if you cannot really cast uh, multiple spells per turn you're not really getting ahead unless they have very uh, reactive hands and uh, they cannot deal uh, they cannot establish enough of pressure so that you just try to grind them uh, so that they run out of threats uh, well rather run out of answers to your threats because absent company definitely has more threats than uh, Timur Delver can ever handle even with the snapcaster mage especially against the builds which run full playset of Eternal Witnesses. I run only two because uh, it's not amazing against uh, big mana decks. It's only great against blue decks, but we've lost one of the big 
blue decks are archetypes in all flavors of tween and then while um, rock decks like Chand or Chandker is still gonna be alive it's going to be rather uh, crazy for them to fight against big mana decks so uh, this is why I don't expect high number of those decks well Chant uh, is not particularly horrible matchup I think it's close to even actually but um, it could be really tricky sometimes he's thinking like yes he has a vapor snack but vapor snack still doesn't do anything to this board because of the spell skites so he cannot even postpone the combo for one turn here as I said he's gonna try to remand the unoffensive well that, that's actually yeah so the, he's gonna try to remand it and I'll cast it again and that will be it pretty much because I'm at 12 and Losing to life from Spellscape doesn't do a whole lot, and I don't necessarily die on the next turn, even if I don't manage to get the combo going. He tries to remand it, but I'll cast it again, yeah. Uh, important to point out, while I already mentioned the two walls and seven one mana dorks, I changed the build to make it close to what Logan Mize, uh, has been playing in the past several weeks in this format so I even cut the tight hollows colors from the sideboard and put uh, like a Phyrexian Revoker because even though it may die to a Pyroclasm or Kozilex Return or anything like that but Revoker is such a nice uh, court target while they cast uh, something like Ugin or Oblivion Stone or Karn so while that card is on the stack you can at instant speed react and record a calling for Revoker and shut down that card until uh, they draw another way to get rid of it but then you bought yourself a turn without really much poor distraction and uh, they have to quickly draw an answer to evoker in the meantime you can draw or flip from company a spell skite or something like that to protect it from let's say something like uh, targeted removal which I probably they won't bring in so uh, but anyways uh, this might give you a turn against Oblivion Stone or Ugin to uh, draw into a combo or let's say another quarter company into Fulminator Mage or even Mind Sensor. Also Revoker is a nice tool not just in the Tron matchup. On the other hand the new Mono black or black splash something Eldrazi decks, those play all all is dust because they don't have so much mana from the Tron lands, and also because uh, I think it's simply better uh, there because uh, that deck plays a lot of colorless creatures and permanents, so that Oblivion Stone, uh, well Oblivion Stone nukes everything away no matter uh, the color all the stuff just uh, keeps your board alive and uh, Eldrazi deck is much more proactive and now f in the second game still before sideboard my opponent goes down to 15 uh, from a fetch into shockland into Jitaxian probe I think he saw a very mediocre hand from me of course Delver in turn one so he's gonna try hardest to play it as a tempo game meantime just a force into Noble 
Delver didn't flip, which is good for me, so I'm not taking that much damage just yet. Second land, I believe that's a stomping ground. Bolt for the noble, trying to slow me down. Attack with a Delver for one. But he's at 13. So at any point, if I uh, get some creatures down, I can try to race without ever threatening a combo. As unfortunately for me, his Darwell flipped uh, while my second turn was just a Razor Bush, Ficket, and Pass. I think I was a bit flooded and uh, had a bunch of cords calling in my hand. I did have a Path to Exile for his Delver to try to slow him down in order to buy some time to draw some gas of my own. He grabbed an island with the Path. That's a Mr. Rainforest, I believe. As his untapped land for now, Tarmogoyf and Pass. It's kind of nasty, and it's already a 4 or 5, which is quite a lot. And uh, if I don't draw. DK or path or witness for path or DK. I might be in real trouble. Finn Hunter could buy some time, but I'm playing against a deck with Snapcasters and Balls, so it's very unlikely Finn Hunter would do much. Four Flans, that's a. Wood of Foothills. Kitchen Fangs, which resolved, pushed me up to 17. He's cracking the rainforest end of turn, I believe. I'm trying to figure out the proper layout. In the meantime, Thermogoyf comes in for four. I'm thinking about it, but at this point, it just looked better to block it, even though things won't train with Thermogoyf, but it will as effectively this turn gain me six life. So I'm up to 19. He's at 12 and past the turn, which is sort of dangerous. There might be a lot of nasty things coming up. I think I drew like three chords or something that game, or even four. At least three. So, blopping a couple fetches, no responses from him, which is good. So, yeah, nothing special in my graveyard so far, just a path. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, going to Logan Miser's kind of build meant putting a bunch of Voice of Resurgence. It's not to main deck, but to sideboard. And cutting Hand Disruption for um, more spicy one offs. Still not sure about the Revoker, but the rest is very standard. I don't uh, play Sin Collector in my 75 right now. I might actually slice a slot for it. One Burnt on for Stander, no Core Firewalker, and that I might regret. But for Ebbs and Company to beat Burn decks or Zoo decks, you don't necessarily need Firewalker, although that helps a lot. Plus, Firewalker can be uh, used against uh, Naya decks and against some uh, all kinds of Black Red X decks as well. 
but a lot of ha different spicy hate bears might be more important I'm not sure I didn't want to think a huge amount before this match while I was putting back together this build so four chords and two path to excels main deck I really like paths uh, but four chords is a big thing plus Finn Hunter is also in there in the main deck might be too many non-creature spells for the company he cracked the fetch end of turn I believe now trying to attack with the Thermagoth yet again I believe I blocked the Thermagoth with the kitchen things or not I'm not sure, because Kishfinx is a combo piece and then I'm no danger of dying just yet, I don't think I blocked, so I think I took the damage in, because I can often just uh, reload the kitchen things with an offense or things like that. He's at 11, but I'm at 13. My draws are really, really slow. I think I had two two more cords in my deck, but there is so little chance that he doesn't really have anything there. I'm not sure what I cracked the fetchland here. Because I wouldn't block with kitchen things. Oh yeah. Uh I guess playing it around spell pierce, that's the thing. Cause now I I would just uh, have the option of... I know, um, with the path in the graveyard and the Tarmogoyf still attacking me, I was hoping that this second card of calling will resolve uh, for Eternal Witness to get back Path to Exile and cast it on the Tarmogoyf. But no, it wasn't bound to happen. I don't think I knew about that spell pierce. I think that's the second one. And the bolt to kitchen things. I know, just to my face, yeah, because I took the four from Tarmago, so it's bolt snapcaster bolt. Kill you. Gotcha. Yeah, my hand was just another land and another card of calling. It was a decent start in hand. Uh, we've uh, kitchen things, noble path, couple courts, some lands, but yeah, kind of flooded a little bit here. And the Tarmogoyf basically did a whole lot of work. So now we go to the sideboard games, where I have a lot of good tools. And I imagine he does as well. Basically what I do is uh, take out one of the two walls, take out one Melira I think, or I think both, and I bring uh, one Burnton, two Abrupt Decays and three Voice of Resurgence. It's a really awesome card against all the blue decks. Decay kills Tarmago, Burn Turn saves me. Or my creatures from bolts and such. I take out one Viserys here because I play free mind deck, so two is enough. Because the combo becomes less of a concern and focus after sideboarding. I take out one cord because, as you can see, it could be a liability sometimes. I 
I'm not sure if I would have brought Stead Hollow Scholar in this matchup. Anyways, it's cut off from the sideboard entirely because I don't need so much hand disruption anymore. Two combo decks are gone, and Scholars or Fotsies were mainly for the Amulets Bloom matchup. I end up cutting one of the spell skies be uh, and keep one in the deck. So, while it's good and sometimes blocks Tarmogoyfs, but it doesn't block a Delver when it's flipped. And uh, one is generally enough. If I try to be overprotective and don't maintain enough pressure and action in the early turns, then stuff like spell sky is not gonna save me that much. Plus, after Cyber, he's supposed to bring more answers, like maybe some more counter spells and or more removal. Also, important to notice that his build of Timur Delver features is a charm that doubles up as a creature removal or counter for my cord or path or company. I lost this one, so I'll be starting first. Even though sometimes, of course, it's better to switch turns. But it's gonna be okay. I imagine this matchup won't be so lopsided. Because it's bad to underestimate the power of. Tarmogoyf and then Balsam Caster Bolt. Vapor Snack is also pretty cool to upon Snapcaster and do other cool stuff. It's pretty nice that it's Timor, it's not Grixis, so no call against command, which in the past used to be one of the banes of the Melira deck killing a small guy and uh, destroying a spell skite or well you can do actually that uh, let's say destroying spell skite and discarding my last card in hand or killing a guy and bringing back uh, something like Tessic or Snapcaster or Chase I think I decided to not bring in Lin Valley in this matchup because I wasn't sure whether he was running any Is it Staticasters or Grim Velovamancers in his build. In the dark I probably would bring it in because it, at the very least it blocks a flipped uh, Delver, which might be already enough. So I started off with forests from a fetch land into bird. He started off with a untap breeding pool into delver. Overgrow tomb tapped and pass on the turn, which is not a great sign for for me, I suppose. He shows me a dismember from the uh, delver, which is a lot of pain, and he's already attaining. His Delver attacks, I definitely don't want to block at this point. Then he goes for a and Probe, falls down to 16. Show him Temple Garden, two townships, Cord and the Red Cap. Then 
draws for the probe. Rainforest cracks it for an untapped shock land already down to 13. Gets a uh, stomping ground. And now it's, I believe, a Tarmogoyf. I suppose. Yeah, it's a Tarmogoyf. Which is a weird play. I get to hit the Delver with the red cap. I don't know if I should have kept this hand. No two drop. Though there are so many of them in the deck. Or something like DK Path to Exile off the top for a Thermogoyf or a Delver. Probably should have mulliganed that hand, but it was so tempting. It had any mana, it had a bird, it had some mid game. And this matchup is not so crazy to keep, uh, to not keep a uh, okay hand in the dark. Here's Township. And with the bird I can activate it. I think he's gonna end of turn try to bolt my bird so that I don't get to activate township way too much. I think about it for quite some time. What to do? As you know, I have a Corda Calling in my hand, which I think is what I ended up doing in response to that bolt for the bird. But I think I should have just activated uh, Township here. Obviously, Cord gets spell pierced, which is kind of sad. I think he was. Uh, really telegraphing that sequence he falls down to quite a low life total as a result of fetching a uh, steam vents I oh, know uh, it was tapped anyways he's at 12 uh, and I know about this member Hit cracks in for four with the Tarmogoyf, so I fall down to nine. <clears throat> Don't have white source for township right now. So it's tr quite tricky at this point. Although I may have had it in my hand. Well, we shall see very soon. Did I really do that? Oh my. Did I really do that? Well, I'm at 9 and facing a time ago. If but I think what I should have done is to uh, play the temple untapped so that I have Gavney Township up. <clears throat> ah, I had DK, so that's why, that's why, that's why. Because one, uh, if I get rid of the time ago so that I don't have to block it with the red cap, then... Um, he needs two removals to deal with the red cap before township kicks in. So this is why I played it tapped. Okay. 
Now I see it. Kraken in with the red cap. And pass on the turn. After laying down a fetch. Just two cards left in my hand. I think it was another cord. I'm not sure. Oh my. Scavenger news. Fine play. Some green mana. But... I don't think it was right to actually play it out here, like that. I think I should have waited till it can uh, get potentially out of reach of this member. Which he ends up casting now and going just down to 4. In response I eat some dudes from his graveyard. With the scavenger nose. Yeah, probably it was a mi uh, mistake there. I didn't have to cast the Ooze here, because I knew about the Dismember. On the other hand, I was concerned with my life total. And this way, he put himself down to 4, so... Probes and... Shocklands and Fetches are a liability now for him. And I was hoping to finish off the game with the Red Cap just bouncing off all the time due to balance with township he goes down to just free life after fetching with the scalding turn and with a bunch of delver decks you just have to do that sometimes go really low otherwise um, you cannot do much, you really should maintain the tempo and hope for the best. With a township up and the green fetchlet, I cannot do a whole lot here. On Tepskis, draws for the turn. I believe there are quite a few cards in his hand right now. Not too many, but still. Tarmac another Tarmagov comes down. Which to me felt like okay, but... Um, I soon gonna do some mistake here. Overestimating the potential plays he could do. Because there was no way he doesn't have some bolt or easy charm or something like that. Three cards in his hand. And one removal just ruins me. So I should have just uh, stayed on the blocking side of things and block his Tarmogoyf and his attack instead I attack with my red cap it bounces off the Tarmogoyf with the content play trigger in the stack I'm um, gonna try to activate it to deal 2 to face but he'll have something to tell to that ball to the red cap so that's it's gone it's gone for good now it's easy charm he actually revealed me a bolt accidentally I believe if I'm not mistaken there and now I'm kinda wrecked 4 or 5 time ago if it's gonna ruin my day With that fetch into, let's say, forest, I should have removed a creature from my graveyard, but because Redcap died, so there are two creatures in my graveyard, so Termogoyf is a 4-5 instead of 3-4. So 
So what I should have done is just pass the turn, he attacks with the timer, go if I block, it bounces off, and I don't pump it with the township waiting for him to respond, because he can then try to catch me, but then next turn I can again block, and even if he kills it, I can still township, um, so I kind of can hit the removal right there with it, but now I'm down to... 6 life, he's at 3 though, but red cap is gone, so no great ways for reach here. Trying out a fin hunter, which prompts a response of just snapcaster bolt and bolt. And then I die. Oh Welsh. Really clunky draws in this game and the previous one. Couple misplays here and there. It shows me that <laughs> his last card in hand was surgical extraction. Which is kinda of funny. Cracks weakness, cracks persist, so fine card. He can't play stuff like uh, Relic or the Black Spellbomb because of his own time guys. But he can play Surgical with Snapcasters in his attack. And on the plus side, when he, let's say, counters something with Spell Pierce, then he can remove all of those with Surgical. So he can potentially sometimes um, make it a bad day for some combo decks for ours, not just mine surgical doesn't really shuts down my combos but it deals with matters on board so this is game 4 Post sideboards. Right now it's 2 1 for him. But I'm hoping for a comeback. Didn't have the best draws ever. And I think his draws in all three games were quite decent. But that's the power of Delver decks. It's really hard for them to have suboptimal draws in general, but this time he took a mulligan down to six. But he's on the uh, on the draw here. I believe he has been on the play in these four games. I'm not sure. I think I won the die roll and then I lost two games or something. No, he was on the play in game two because he lost the game one. Obviously the dynamic shifts quite a lot depending on who's on the play. Heath into Temple Garden, some down to 17 into Birds of Paradise. Quite fine, turn one. Although I took three damage. Could have fetched the forest here, but on the ply, I think it's okay. If I would see from him on the play Delver turn one, then I'll probably fetch a forest. Overgrown tomb untapped. He has one mana. If he had a bolt, he would have used it, I think, by now. Or maybe he's just waiting for better targets. First casting the voice, and then casting Viserys here. And it seems like he doesn't have a spell snare or anything. Bolting voice once it's already in play on my turn is a pretty bad idea. So, tap Steam Vance at the end of my turn. From the Scalding Tarn.
second scaldian tone and he's tanking but not for too long passes the turn back to me and I can't be ha happier with this turn of events I cast spells with a voice and play on opponent's turn way too often than I should have. Trying sometimes to make them tap out. This was the strategy against twin decks. But against uh Tamp or Control, I think with an active voice and play, what I should do is actually cast more stuff on my turn. I do it out of course uh quite often, but less than I should. I realized maybe I just fear something like anger of the gods or uh, damnation so this is why against some Grixis decks uh, I sometimes cast a company on their turn with the voice in play so that I don't get wrecked by a anger which Delver decks can't really play but they can play stuff like Magma Spray, Static Caster, Lava Mancer. Uh, company revealed just a witness, nothing more. But I got back Company to my hand, which is still pretty good. He has nothing on board just yet. And my board presence is pretty good. Attack with the voice. He's down to 16. I'm at 14, but I have so much going on in this game. There's very, very little he could do. He can do. Tarmogoth is a blocker. That's fine, but it's not gonna matter so much. I have in <laughs> nearly infinite blockers for that Tarmogoth. And the Tarmogoth belief right now is just to poor one two because I got back the company back to my hand so there's just like two fetches on in each graveyard so it's a very sad time ago if land number four I could potentially cast company into quarter calling or something crazy like that starting with the company once again this time he thinks what is more scary whatever I get from company or a token and he decides that token is probably less scary than whatever I get from the company so he attempts a spell pierce for the company that happens because I have only bird that's the only mana source left after the company so that's a way but then I just uh, have to excel his Tarmogoyf so that I can attack for a bunch of damage on my turn that was a crack for 5 he falls down to just 9 after I believe another Fetchlands Draws for the turn and just concedes because this is just a too overwhelming position. Okay guys, don't forget to subscribe, I hope you enjoy this. There will be one more similar style legacy match, so stay tuned for legacy mod against Sh Shardless Sultai. So that's coming in the next few days. Plus, I'll be playing some Legacy Premier events in a, in a couple of days this Sunday. So check the website, check the channel, leave comments below to any video, express your opinion because it it does matter. Uh, you can also give leave me some suggestions as well. Uh, there will be one more standard match also in the coming days 
something casual funny. Also, don't forget to find me on Twitch. I'll be streaming Modern and Popper there sometime next week as well. So, until the next sale, goodbye, folks.